in order to figure out f the distance in feet of the wavelength, what you have to do is you have to take the speed of sound, which the 1130, if you remember before, is the speed of sound, and divide it by the frequency. And if you want to do it, figure it out in inches, because the higher frequencies are so small, some of them are several inches in length. Um, you take the same number and you basically you just multiply it by 12 to figure out what the wavelength is per inches. And you can also figure out time. Because sound is slow, a thousand feet a second, that's pretty slow. You know, it's a city block. You yell a city block away one second, um, you hear the sound. Have you ever seen anybody dribble a basketball at a distance? You know, you know, they'll bounce the basketball and then you hear the sound when the ball's back into their hand. It's like, whoa, what's that? I used to have a, a, a neighbor's garage across the street that when we played basketball, you would hear the reflection off of their garage door and you would hear a huge delay. You know, boom, da -doom, you know, you'd hear this delay. And that's how slow sound is. And uh, you could, because it's slow, you could figure out how long in time it takes for the wave to develop. This wave being, uh, where am I at? Being about uh, five feet long, it takes approximately, and you could do the calculations if you want, approximately five milliseconds for this entire wave to develop. That's five one thousandths of a second uh, for this wave to develop. And it takes less for this wave to develop. And that, it gets a little confusing there but after we get going and start playing with the acoustics, it'll make more sense. So you said uh, the higher the sound is, you can, uh, you can hear it quicker? You don't hear it quicker, the wave develops quicker. In other words, we had that 200 hertz that was approximately five feet long. Well, it took, because of this, the speed of sound being 1,000 feet a second, 200 hertz, this five foot wave that we were looking at right here, it took five milliseconds for this for the wave to get to here. And if we we go down to 100 hertz, a 10 foot long wave, it takes 10 milliseconds for that wave to develop. Because sound, there's time, and there's frequency, and there's distance. They all play into each other. Um, these are some of the, I took some numbers and punched them in and, and did the calculations where we took uh, the speed of sound divided by, I just grabbed the number, uh, 125 hertz. And that has an approximate wavelength of nine feet. And I did it, which is, uh, I did it with 500 hertz and it has approximate wavelength of 27 inches. And then I went all the way up to 2000 hertz or 2K and I figured out the time. I punched these numbers in. 2K takes approximately half a millisecond to develop. Just like we said, the 200 hertz takes five milliseconds. So you can cut that in half and say 100 milliseconds takes two and a half seconds. And then all the way down to 2,000 hertz takes approximately 1.5 seconds to develop. And then also, you can calculate the frequency. If you know something has a certain wavelength, you can calculate what frequency that is. Now, you may not, under, you may not know this, but like the pipes on a church organ have a specific length to put out a specific frequency. So the largest pipes, let's say, let's say a pipe is nine feet long. If it's nine feet long, it sure would have the ability to put out 125 hertz very well. And let's say it was 18 feet long. It would be double the distance would be half the frequency. So it would be 60 some hertz it would be able to put out. And uh, let's see what's, uh, I can't think of what the actual frequencies are per notes. Um, but so each, each pipe on an organ has a specific length 
to put out a specific frequency. And the same goes with a flute. All you're doing with a flute or a clarinet or a trumpet or a trombone is you're changing the wavelength of that instrument to be able to put out different frequencies. And I took typical frequencies and uh, calculated the lengths and how long it took for each one of those waves to develop. Now these are one octave apart or double the frequency all the way through the audio spectrum. 31 hertz being a low, the lowest frequency you can either hear Supposedly we can hear 20, but it just turns into a vibration more than, than an audible signal. 63 hertz would be a typical low-end sound of a bass drum or a bass guitar or, or a pipe organ type sound, all the way up to the 16,000 hertz, which is pretty much left over for cymbals and uh, other instruments that go very high into the frequency spectrum. And you could figure out the wavelength. Like I said, I just punched in those, those calculations to figure out the wavelength and how long it takes for each one of those waves to develop. And I also did a backwards calculation to figure out if you know the distance, 200 feet, that would be 6 hertz. If you wanted to try to reproduce 6 hertz, which nobody would want to, I don't know, um, it would be 200 feet long. Um, the reason why this is even relevant is because when we get into the acoustic factor, go ahead. Time is all in milliseconds. Thanks, I didn't write that down. Is you can calculate in live sound, we deal with room acoustics. And if a room is 30 feet long, it has the potential to make this frequency of 38 hertz prominent in that room. If you've ever been in a room, let's say your living room, it sounds different than your bathroom. If you're talking to somebody in your living room, it sounds different than when you're, ta when you're talking to somebody in your bathroom. Specific frequencies are accentuated, are, are brought out because of the distance the sound travels before it reflects off of something and then reflects back. And those characteristics are understood when you understand that every frequency has a wavelength. And uh, <laughs> I see a lot of confused faces. Please ask. Every amplification device will amplify the, every audio frequency from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And the wattage of an amplifier is how much power it puts out, the volume, the physical volume. It has nothing to do with the frequency. Hopefully, it will put out the same volume at 100 hertz as it does at 10,000 hertz. And any amplifier purchased today should be able to do that. So you're probably purchasing an amplifier based on watts, which is the most common factor in an amplifier, how many watts it puts out. And we'll def we're definitely getting into that area. Well, it, what happens in the shower is you get these reflections. And the same, same reason that when we're, when we're in the recording studio, we, uh, we use effects units with delay and chorus and reverb. Sometimes you try to simu simulate these situations, a shower or a church if you use a large reverb. It's the same difference as, using, as putting a microphone in the church and recording the original sound of the person and recording the, s the reflections, all the reflections that occurred in that s environment. And that, that's all a reverb unit is, and we'll get into that in detail later on. Um, I'm sorry I had to throw all this math in at the first day, but once you get an understanding, again, it, it just works out.